Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to use conditional formatting in LibreOffice Calc spreadsheet. So the first thing I'll do is open up LibreOffice Calc. I'm going to create this blank spreadsheet and let's save the document. I'm just going to give it a file name. So I've got a blank document here <clears throat> and we're going to use this tool called conditional formatting. So I'm going to copy some data, some basic information into here. So what we have here is a list of people's names and how much they're earning wages. So in this example, we'll, right, we'll left click on the B column, we'll format the cells and we'll make them a currency. So we can see currency values here. So let's go ahead and select those cells. I'm going to select all of these cells and go to conditional formatting and select condition here, the first option. And in here, we can apply different types of conditions to format these cells or color code them or do various things. So in this example, it says cell value is equal to, but in this example, I'm going to say it's less than. So I'm going to select less than and I'm going to say less than, let's say 2000. So I don't type in the pound sign, I'm just going to type in the numerical value 2000. So anything here that's been highlighted or selected that is less than 2000, I want to tell LibreOffice to do something with those particular cells. So these 1800 ones here, for example, or the 1200 here. And I'm going to tell it to create a new style. So I'm going to select new style, or you can select one of these styles here, but I'm going to say a new style. And I'm going to give that style a name. I'm going to say less than 2000. So I know what it is. And I can do various formatting. I can change the fonts or change a lot of different things with the border and so forth. But in this example, to make life easy, I'm going to change the background and I'm going to set it to yellow. This yellow color. I'm going to click OK. So this is one condition applied. And when I apply that condition anything that is less than 2000 will get highlighted in yellow so let's apply another condition I'm going to click the add button here and it's going to create a second condition here and I'm going to say anything that is less than 3000 I'm going to go to new style and give this a name less than 3000 and I'll change the background I'm going to set it to this blue color. And then the last one I'm going to add, and I'm going to say cell value is less than 5000. And we'll create a new style and we'll say less than 5000. And in background, we'll set this one to green. We'll click OK. So the conditions are quite important in terms of how they're ordered. So I'm going to numerical value on the way down. So anything that's less than 2000 will be yellow. Anything is uh, less than 3000, but not less than 2000, will be this blue teal color. And anything that is less than 5000, but is not less than 3000 or 2000, will be this green color. So let's click OK. And here you can see the colors have been applied in logical order. So if we were to change a value like this green one here, if we were to set that to something like 1100, it will automatically change the color in here. So this is what we call conditional formatting. Based on the conditions we apply, uh, we can apply certain formatting to these values. So that's one example of condition, conditional formatting. Let's look at taking that same information, that same data, and we'll paste it here. And let's set this to also a uh, currency value. And in this case, what I would do is, <clears throat> to make it a bit easier to understand this next conditional formatting, I'm going to apply a, a quick selection here, so or a um, an autofill, should I say? So this top value here, I'm just going to click in the right-hand corner here where the little black box is, and I'm going to drag down, and it's just going to add 
an extra pound to each one of these values. So they're all going to be very similar, but they're just going to increase by one pound each. And the, the, the data has already been selected, but I can reselect it like this. And in this conditional format, I'm going to do color scale. And in the color scale option here, it's going to say this, the smallest value will be red. Anything in the middle will be this yellow color. So in the middle will be number four. So that will be yellow. And then anything that's at the higher end, which is this value down here, will be green. And it's going to basically uh, fade the colors between those values across. And the middle value is 50%. So it's bang in the middle. We're saying 50% is where the middle value will be. So when we click OK, we can see that it's color scaled it. So anything that was very low was red. Anything that was very high was green. In the middle was yellow. And in between those values, it's going to color scale it like this. So we can apply that value to other types of information and get a color scale um, to represent high and low values or mid values. That's what we use it for. So the next example will take the same data. Let's just... Uh... So here we've got that same information. And again, we're going to apply a format cell and we'll make it a currency value as well. And the next conditional formatting is the bar formatting. So we're going to select these cells here and we'll go to data bar. And there's not much you need to really do with the, the values in here. You can leave them as default. I'll explain after we've implemented this what they're actually doing, but it's almost like having a bar graph inside your cell, basically. So you can set various values in here. It's worth experimenting, uh, but in essence, uh, what, the, what this condition will do is create a little bar graph almost inside these values to represent um, those values in almost like a bar type style. So we'll click OK, and you can see that it's gradiently coloring the cells based on how much uh, the highest values are, the mid values and the very low values. So that's what it's really doing. We can kind of see this in a different way. We can select all of these and paste them here next to it. So we selected them and copy and paste them here. And then we can select those same values again. We can go to condition formatting and click on data bar again. And in this case, we'll go to more options and we'll say display bar only and click OK and then click OK here. Then we can just see the bar graph values on the side here. Um, if we were to set some of these to lower values like 500 and set this to 500, then we can see it's only taking up a small part of the bar. Uh, we may set this to something like 900 and you'll see how it's filling in the bar here a bit more clearly and this bar is based on the lowest value and the greatest value so if we were to make this something like uh, let's say this one here we made it turned it into um, 2400 you'll see that would be probably around the middle because it's roughly half of this amount here. So we set this to 4,800. That will be 100% of the bar, basically, because it's double that amount. Okay, I hope that makes sense. That's just how we use the conditional data bar. We can also set uh, minus values in here as well. So if we were to set this to a minus, then it's going to decrease and it's going to show the bar graph as a negative value here so we can see the reds are negatives here and you can change the formatting in there so when you select something that you've already pre-formatted you can select those values and then go to manage here and in here you need to select the relevant you can see it's column i or column h and you can see i here and h above so it will be this data set here and we can edit it and then we can go into more options and we can set the negative values to something else like yellow for example and click OK and then click OK here and then click OK 
and then the, that negative value will be yellow. We can also apply it to this one here as well. So select them, go to manage, and we're looking at H column this time, edit, more options, and we can set that one to yellow as well. So you really got to experiment. There's so many different permutations and techniques you can use to apply these styles. It's just too much to explain, but I'm just trying to give you a basic overview here. So the next style we'll look at We'll take these names again. What you can do is actually, you can select these cells here, for example. You can copy them, but when you paste them, you paste the special. And when you paste the special, it's not going to paste the uh, conditional formatting with it. So when you click OK, you can see the conditional formatting has been removed. So that's a quick way to paste the information uh, without having to paste the conditional formatting alongside it. You can copy that information quickly that way. We're going to delete this column of the, or this piece of information and in here we're going to put in sales. So we can say that this is the employee name and these are how many sales they've generated, let's say within a week. So we can set five. It's, it's still uh, applying basically um, the formatting for currency. So we're going to select these cells here, right click, format cell and we want to set it to number value here because we want to show how many sales they've done so they did 5 sales we've done 10 10 here 20 50 60 70 90 and 95 so we can select these cells here and we can go to uh, the icon set and with icon set, you can apply different icons to the values. So in this example, we use the traffic lights and we use four, four different traffic lights. There's a three traffic lights, there's a two traffic lights, there's different styles, there's arrows, there's triangles, there's smiley faces, there's flags, there's so many different types of icon formatting here. In this example, we we'll use uh, these traffic lights. So there's four different traffic lights. So the first traffic light is red and it says we can do um, is greater than or equal to and we can set it to a value or a percent and this example will say is five percent this one here will set to fifty percent and this one here will set to ninety so it's anything that's equal to or greater than 50% or anything that's equal or greater to 5% or anything that's equal to or greater than 90% or anything that isn't equal to any of these values will be great. So let's click OK. And we can see the conditional formatting for these icons have been applied. We can set this to a lower value like 2 would make more sense. We can set this to 6 or 8. And as we change these values, the values in here will change. So that's conditional formatting using these icons. It looks a bit blurry because I've zoomed in. If you zoom back out to its uh, normal sizing, then it will be a lot clearer. So experiment with all these different types of conditional formatting. You can get quite a lot of uh, variations and look at your data in different ways. It's quite interesting to see how this data might work. So let's try one more example. We'll cut and paste this information in again. And in this example, we will cut and paste in, or we're going to enter some dates. So in the date column, we're going to say that these wages were paid out on these specific dates. This is just all made up data, but we can say someone got paid on the, let's look at the date today. So today is, the 25th and last week Monday was the 18th so let's try and do some conditional formatting based on last week's values and today's date so we we'll set this one to the 25th of the 9th 2017 so we can say that person got paid today this person got paid last week on Monday 
and we'll set all of these to last week values we'll just use the series fill in uh, and then we'll set this one also to the 25th and the 25th so some people got paid last week some people got paid this week so we're going to select them and we'll go to conditional formatting and select date and we say date is either today or in this case we'll say the date is uh, last week and we'll click on here and we'll click new style and in the name we'll call it last week and in the background color we will select yellow and we'll add one more style and in that style we'll say date is this week new style and we'll select green so we've just got two styles we've got the first style that says date is last week which is yellow and we've got a second style or condition which says date is this week and it's green so we expect the top one and these bottom two to be green and everything else should be yellow we'll click OK the top, top one and the bottom two are green because they're today's date which is this week and everything else is applied yellow so when you open up this spreadsheet on another day, these will automatically change because if you opened it up tomorrow, for example, um, in, in theory, these should all stay the same, to be honest. But if you added more data, more people, or you, you happen to change this date, maybe you got this date wrong and you set it, you open up the spreadsheet tomorrow and you set it to the 25th of the 9th, 2017, you made an error in the data entry. When you re-enter it, it will turn to green. So I hope that all makes sense. There's quite a lot of the conditional formatting you can apply here. One thing to note, if you want to change something like, let's say you want to change this blue color to a different color, the, the quick way to do that is to go to conditional formatting and manage. And you, need, you know that you're looking at column B here. So it will be this value here. You can go to edit and you'll select this option here and you know that's the blue color. You can go to this particular style uh, we want to edit that style so uh, okay we have to edit the style somewhere else format styles Let's click on styles and formatting and here we've got last week less week uh, less than 1000 so this one here would have been less than 3000 I believe this one here so we can double click on that modify it and in here we can select something like orange click OK and it changes to orange here so if you want to change any of the styles that you've applied or these custom styles that you've created you have to do that in format styles and styles and formatting here and when you go to that option you'll see this box down the side and then you need to pick the relevant option from here uh, like last week or this week here, this is, these were two custom ones we did for last week and this week. This week was green. If we click on this week now and modify it, it will show green here. And we can select something like um, this blue. Click OK. And then all of these greens will turn to blue. That's a quick way of formatting the styles. OK. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And... If you've got any questions, feel free to message me on YouTube or any of my other social media or my blog and I'll try and give you some help. And I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial.